good morning students welcome to sharad chandra ias academy so daily current affairs analysis of 20th april 2022 the topics which we are going to discuss today are about the gaza strip details of ulan scheme about the brics countries pendency of the more number of cases in supreme court and about a mystery liver disease which is being spread in europe and us so let us start our discussion with our first topic of today that is about the gaza strip okay so this the context of this particular news is uh, israel is conducting attacks on gaza after a rocket was fired into the israel from the palestina enclave now the armed wing of hamas has already claimed this particular uh, draw I mean attack uh, was claimed by the hamas see if you see the israel and palestinian issue so today we will discuss the complete uh, topic of israel and palestinian issue and we will get an idea of what is this fight and reasons and causes and what is the present position of this particular conflict between israel and palestine okay so and what is amas and what does it stand for and so on so if you see the if you see the map see this particular country this particular area comes under the israel okay so whereas this area is known as west bank and this area is known as gaza strip west bank is a area which is sandwiched between both israel and jordan whereas gaza strip is sandwiched between israel and egypt okay so this israel part israel part this part is inhabited by jews whereas this part west bank and gaza are inhabited by muslims okay so as of now the control is under the, this part is under the control of uh, israeli government and this part this west bank and gaza is under the control of the arab means muslim government now if you see the observe the jerusalem jerusalem it is the east jerusalem east jerusalem you will find the presence of islamic groups whereas in the west jerusalem it is dominated by the jewish groups okay so this is the position of map of israel and palestine so the news of today is about this gaza strip so this from this gaza strip the hamas group the militant group hamas militant group conducted a rocket raid i mean uh, on the israeli groups so in the retaliation israel is also doing the same so if you see the history if you go back to the history then we will see that this is the um, yeah. so this is how the map of israel palestina has been converted to israel so in 1946 if you see these are small white area white area if you see these are the jewish settlements okay so this is completely are the islam settlements palestinian settlements now by 1947 the map convert means the jewish increase the uh, the area under their influence okay and then this is from 1949 to 67 and this is the present position present position Okay. so white color says israeli state and green color represents the palestinian state okay so right so coming back to the news coming back to the news having an idea on map coming back to the news what is this amaz and what does it stand for as actually what happened uh, historically why this uh, uh, conflict arisen if you see the conflict actually started in 1917 okay if you see it started in 1917 when this area was under the control of british rule similarly as the britishers ruled india similarly this area was also under the control of britishers rule so in 1917 britishers proposed that jewish that the jewish uh, Jew, jews can come and settle in their homeland can come and settle in the national homeland of palestina that is how these britishers allowed the jews to settle in uh, palestinian region 
but uh, this obviously aroused conflicts between both jews and arabs jews versus arabs conflict started as the settlements of the jewish people increased in this area so in this conflict uh, the britishers could not hand in this conflict and they gave away independence in 1948 leaving the responsibility for in the hands of un so leaving the responsibility in the hands of un regarding the conflict of jews and arabs the britishers left the left this area gave away independence and uh, uh, left the conflict to un in 1948 Uh, jews jews declaration of israel independence prompted uh, surrounding the so what happened is in 1948 jews wa- declared independence they themselves declared that this particular area was israel and belonged to only jewish people not arabs so this arose obviously the surrounding countries like jordan uh, particular egypt so all these countries they means attacked these israel declared war on israel so arab states to attack israel at the end of the war israel controlled 50% more territory so earlier the israeli territory was very little little so now after the war the israeli territory expanded israeli territory expanded and some more palestinian that means israel won the war israel won the war and the number of territories the amount uh, the area under the occupation of israel also increased after the 1948 war so and uh, so now palestinian liberation organization was formed in 1964 so this organization 1964 which was formed uh, in 1964 that is palestinian liberation organization they worked for the liberation of palestine means they want the palestinian state for arabs from the hands of israelis so again in 1967 again in 1967 there was a major war broke out between the arab countries and israel in which again israel won the war and even occupied not only in this israel occupied not only the israeli territory and palestinian territories it also occupied some of the territories of jordan some of the territories of egypt which are surrounding the israel so some of the territories of jordan and egypt so it made an agreement with the other countries that okay you should not directly involve in the israel or you should not do any conduct any attacks or wars in the support of palestina so that's how these particular territories were given back to those countries of egypt jordan so from then there is no direct involvement of the neighboring countries in the israeli issue okay so but however the many times many times un was uh, uh, many times this topic was raised in un and several resolutions was passed and as of now the status of palestina palestina un recognizes israel as a state but palestinia only observer status was given okay not complete status of a country only observer status was given to palestina as of now so uh, non member observer states so in 2012 Palestinian position as of now in United Nations is non-member observer state, right? So, as you observed in the map, that one part is known as West Bank, and other part is known as Gaza. Here, the problem is even the Palestinians, the Palestinians. Here, Palestine, you found the Palestinians in two areas. There is no unity among these two as well, because here it is ruled by Hamas. the uh, military I means hamas uh, to some extent more revolutionary uh, because us recognized the hamas as a terrorist group it was ruled by uh, means here the settle may west e- in case of west bank the negotiations are going on so they want to uh, they are trying for a peaceful settlement but uh, in case of gaza strip they are not ready to accept the peaceful settlements to some extent uh, so and uh, you see what is this hamas and all hamas was founded in 1987 so hamas has fought war on israel so principally so it was like the methods used were like suicide bombers and rocket att- rocket attacks so that's the reason why us recognizes hamas not as a political group but as a terrorist group so why because it is following the terror methods of suicide bombers and rocket attacks so they want to install the palestinian state and uh, at the same time as i said there was the differences between uh, the west bank and gaza the west bank does not recognizes the amaz domination over gaza strip so
so that's why it is said that without the assistance of the palestinian authority gaza strip has been taken by hamas so in 2010 if you see in 2007 israel closure on gaza has been tightened with most basic products still subject to harsh restrictions so even though the gaza strip was uh, under the control of hamas it was completely like uh, strictly monitored the borders were strictly monitored by either on the either side of egypt as well as israel side next so yeah this gaza strip is actually a man made entity that means earlier it was not much settled but now it was uh, originated in 1948 when arabs palestinian arabs they flew then they became refugees and settled in this particular gaza strip because uh, because of the wars and because of the attacks between the arabs and jewish many of the civilians they became refugees and they escaped and they relocated they were relocated in the gaza strip okay so so many refugees went to egypt many refugees were uh, went to jordan so so as i said in 2007 hama uh, gaza strip was completely occupied by hamas and gained control over the gaza strip so now israel israel made the gaza as a hostile entity okay gaza is not a country as i said okay gaza is not a country gaza is a small strip between egypt and israel egypt and israel it is a small country no one recognizes gaza as a country small strip between the strip and sandwiched between israel and egypt so this particular gaza is controlled by hamas which is recognized as a terrorist group by us and israel so as they follow the terror methods to achieve their target of removing the israel state and establishing the arab state right next so if you see the west bank and gaza so if you see the west bank is a quite bigger area gaza is a small strip this west bank is considered as still by un as a occupied territory okay occupied territory even though the israel did not claim complete territory of west ba- west bank un considers this as the occupied territory but and gaza is still considered as the occupied territory gaza is also considered as the occupied territory by the un so palestinian now the about the east jerusalem so the conflict is not only about the total territory the conflict is also about palest uh, jerusalem both the groups jewish groups as well as islam groups both want jerusalem as their capital because of their religious sentiments okay both believe that their religions okay they have some religious links with the jerusalem city that's the reason why both the uh, jews as well as the islam uh, arabs uh, want to claim the right over jerusalem okay <coughs> that's the reason why in the east jerusalem the tensions are very high in the gaza strip the tensions are high in the west bank comparatively in the west bank the tensions are little low compared to gaza but still there are tensions and hamas is a, as i said it is a militant group that attacked israel many times so that's why there is a tight vigilance in the borders of the gaza right so why in the april 21 the recent news is about uh, april in recently in the month of ramadan even we have we are in the month of ramadan now so generally in the Ram, in the in this month the arabs will be more uh, sentimental towards the religion that's the reason why the attacks will increase between the israelites and palestinians okay so if you see the present position of this uh, israel and palestina okay present position of israel and palestina so so as of now when i show you the map most of the most of the area was israel but only small area was west bengal uh, sorry west bank under the control of uh, arabs and uh, this small group is known as gaza under the control of amaz group militant group so what is indian stand india always recognizes the palestina india is the one of the first country uh, which recognized the uh, palestinian demilitarization organization plo plo which recognizes the plo as a sole group to control the palestinian area it also recognizes palestina it also 
means india supports two nation theory okay india supports the two state solution two state solution that means this particular territory must be given to both jewish as well as uh, arabs according to their population or according to their whatever uh, population particularly so both must coexist peacefully that's what the message from india as well as many countries many countries accept the two state solution and it is also based on the un Re- resolution of 1947 uh, one would be the state with uh, jews constituted a majority and other would be palestinian arab state so but for decades uh, international community uh, as the only realistic deal to end the israel and the palestinian want some realistic deal but uh, it was uh, till now it was never reached so why why so why the solution is so difficult the problem why the problem is still existing why this on one side you united nations is trying on the other side us is trying on the other side many countries are trying to get the solution for this uh, uh, the conflict between in palestine and israel but the problem is one thing is borders there is no consensus there is no settlement about where to draw the border between the palestina and israel both are claiming the total territories okay because mo- many israeli buildings and settlements are being constructed in west bengal oh, sorry west bank i'm sorry west bank so how can you create a border when the israeli settlements are there in west bank so that's the reason why west bank uh, mean israel is not agreeing to give west bank west bank completely to the palestinians at the same time the major issue is again jerusalem okay jerusalem as i said this is a holy place for both the arabs as well as jews both sides claim the jerusalem as their capital and both say that it is center of religious worship and cultural heritage So, large number of Palestinians who fled their home uh, is what is now Israel. Okay, homes in what is now Israel. So, refugee problem is also there. So, other problem is refugee. How to deal with refugees and how to provide them proper uh, facilities and all. Next, on both sides, on Israel side as well as on Arab side, there was no consensus. That means there is no unity on either on Israel side about the settlement. there is no unity on Ara- either on the arab side about the settlement I mean, both the groups are divided so divided political leadership on both sides so that's why the, it will be it, it is may, uh, it is becoming very difficult to reach a solution nearly almost 83% of world countries have officially recognized the israel so many countries recognized israel as the <coughs> sovereign state and uh, started maintaining the diplomatic relations so we we also maintain diplomatic relations with the israel however at the same time all, many of these countries are sympathetic towards palestina as well right so that's the reason why uh, india and many other countries says that uh, is israel and palestina must negotiate must come to a table and uh, it's uh, and accept two state solution and right to reach the solution in a peaceful way right so un sometimes favors the united nations resolutions on israel uh, human right violation so such such incidents have happened earlier where india favored most of the time india was sympathetic towards the palestina okay right uh, moving moving to the next topic the details of udan scheme udan udan is nothing but the ude desh ki arm nagrik where it wants to make the aviation affordable affordable aviation okay this is scheme so the context is the ministry of civil aviation's principal endeavor to promote the air connectivity to the non metro cities has been granted the prime minister okay so the context is this udan scheme was given a award the award for excellence in public administration so okay udan scheme got an award that is the prime minister's award for excellence in public administration yes 
so here we can say that this particular this particular uh, scheme is where uh, has been so is given this award and uh, we will see what is this scheme what are the features of the scheme and uh, how it is going to help the uh, arm people that means uh, middle uh, lower lower income groups to use the air facility i mean aviation facilities so the name itself says that ude desh ka aam nagrik okay ude desh ki aam nagrik scheme so which means providing aviation facility for the lower income groups as well right so if you see uh, there is a udan day udan day udan day is celebrated on 21st october 21st october is also celebrated as a udan day because this is a day when this scheme has been launched okay so udan scheme uh, 21st october right so the key points are like uh, it is started in 2019 so 2016 i'm sorry the project started in 2016 so the it want to establish the connection to the country's rural and regional areas by lowering the cost of air travel okay so because prime minister modi gave the national civil aviation policy in 2017 according to this civil aviation policy itself this scheme has been launched so the objectives of this scheme is regional aviation market to go get i mean to to gain advantage of regional aviation market and to provide the affordable and uh, economically viable and also at the same time profitable air travel for the common man okay if you see what it will do is underused airports and abandoned airport it will revitalize that means it will open abandoned airports and also it will better uh, it will increase the use of underused airports what are underused airports underused airports means uh, which airports which ha- uh, which where only one or two one or two flights will operate throughout the day they are known as underused or unserved underserved airports so government is aiming to make such underused airports very active means increasing more number of flights to that particular airports and also opening the abandoned airports so through this they want to increase the regional connectivity okay regional connectivity in the tier 2 and tier 3 cities okay and at the same time half of the seats half of the seats in each flight must be subsidized okay half of the seats must be given at a lower prices subsidized prices by the by the uh, whatever the companies which are operating the flights so the scheme subsidizes nearly half of the seats on udan flights so by which it is allowing the lower income groups to travel okay to use the aviation facilities right the initiative actually will last for 10 years it started that uh, expecting 10 years but however it can be extended also so the financial incentives will be given to the uh, airlines to the airlines uh, both central as well as state government and airport operators also extend the financial incentives to some selected airlines as of now as of now uh, if you see primary characteristics of the scheme so there are more number of routes have been opened more number of routes have been opened with uh, so and so for our travel 50% of the total seats must be given at the lesser price airlines receive 3 year subsidy yeah. as i said you financial incentives will be provided from the state government and the central government to operate these low uh, means not much more not more profitable uh, flights so that's why subsidy will be given from the government okay so it government set some budget aside so this is later version later udan 4.0 we will see what is udan 1.0 2.0 3.0 and 4.0 separately as of now uh, the fourth cycle of udan is inaugurated uh, inaugurated in 2019 right so if you see the uh, so till date what is the achievements almost 387 new routes were opened and 16 new airports were brought into operation okay so if you see uh, one by one like udan 1.0 udan 1.0 is the first version of this scheme 
where five airline companies were awarded almost 128 flight routes to operate in 70 airports right so in which 36 are newly made so that is initial initial development about udan 1.0 uh, what happened in udan 2.0 is ministry of civil aviation announced 73 73 underserved and uh, unserved airports okay it, the 73 new airports were get into uh, operational and at the same time it is also helipads okay helipads were also connected under the phase 2 phase 2 what about udan 3.0 phase 3 udan 3.0 this udan 3.0 mostly concentrated on northeast region because you know that the northeast region is most remote region having less transport facilities and also inclusion of sea planes to connect the water aerodromes and inclusion of some tourism routes so in in order to boost the tourism in india and coming to udan 4.0 udan 4.0 says that some new routes will be opened and like uh, islands like Kavarati, Agati, Minikoi islands of Lakshadweep were also connected to these routes. So that is how slowly the Udan, the scope of Udan is being increased from one version to the other version. But however we have the challenges of uh, finances and uh, we have the challenges that many players uh, are small players, many players are small players. So they need more incentives, they need more planes in order to make this Udan scheme successful okay so airlines uh, have leveraged the scheme strategically uh, towards gaining additional slots as of now so that's why airlines should undertake marketing initiatives so that more and more people uh, even see if the government is providing this but how far citizens are making use of this scheme so that's the reason why airlines must uh, take some initiatives in order to make more and more people take the advantage of Udan scheme and more infrastructure is also required for the successful implementation of this scheme right so this is all about the Udan scheme and coming to the next topic that is BRICS yeah. BRICS is uh, like it is a BRICS represents 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 countries. They are Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. Okay. So, the context is uh, India agreed to take part in the virtual summit. Last year also there was a virtual summit because of COVID. So, this year also they are conducting a virtual summit uh, of the leaders. Last year India hosted the BRICS meeting last year. So, it was also virtual. It was held online because of the COVID. So the China, it, now the meeting is held in China, okay, the China's first meeting, this is China's first meeting since the, our uh, tensions at the land border at LSE in 2020. So what are the BRICS and uh, how far, we will see what is this BRICS and when it is originated all. BRICS is actually an acronym, it is an acronym of five countries, right, Brazil, Russia, India, China. Uh, initially it started only as a BRIC brick later south africa added and made it bricks okay so the co the abbreviation of this uh, means this particular brick was coined by goldman sachs an economist okay goldman sachs economist zim in 2001 so why because this particular group of these four countries and along with south africa later joined by south africa it became like they are like developing powers they are developing powers and along with the us this will be the world five largest economies of the 21st century that was said by Zimoni. now he said that okay in the 21st century if the world world the total world will be dominated by us and brick okay that what he said but later upon bricks south africa was added in 2011 and it became bricks now if you see uh, now what is this brick and how it functions first of all a bricks summit are conducted annually every year the, there will be a bricks summit so annual summit will be conducted okay annual summit will be conducted that is very important summit why because bricks does not exist in the form of organization it is not an organization it only functions with through these summits so it's not an organization like united nations organizations okay so it is only a 
<coughs> summit based annual summit based con, uh, group uh, that uh, it is the annual summit between the supreme leaders that's it only summit is there and they will decide what to do what important decisions are taken in that particular summit the chairmanship is uh, right rotated chairmanship is there so if suppose this year it is brazil then next year it will goes to russia then india then uh, china and then south africa again in cyclic cycle revolution of uh, chairmanship uh, so the important things to be noted here is 42% of global population is present in these five countries 23% of gdp 30% of the land and 80% of the global trade is going on in these five countries so it is a very important players at the global level okay so it is a emerging investment market and a global global power block we can say okay so the objectives of brics is uh, more economic cooperation actually uh, economic cooperation is the first bigger ob objective economic cooperation is the first bigger objective among these countries uh, to intensify to increase the cooperation also takes the growth and development into consideration also poverty objectives all the poverty elevation objectives uh, so new and promising political diplomatic entity so economic cooperation and also, also people to people exchange and political and security cooperation right so that is the importance of the brics we have economic cooperation people to people exchange and also in uh, cooperative mechanisms like formal diplomatic engagement political and security cooperation as well so coming to the indian stand if india be india being the part of brics india also enjoys several advantages where we can directly engage with the uh, brazil russia china and south africa okay <coughs> because these are the dominant countries in the global scenario if you see okay so that is all about the brics so moving moving on to the next topic about the pendency of the cases in supreme court yes here we must uh, remember that delayed okay that is the justice delayed is nothing but justice denied so it was a famous saying the justice delayed is justice denied so keeping in this mind we must ensure that the justice must be in time so in time justice is the real justice once the justice is delayed uh, it cannot be the real justice so that's the uh, that's the thing we have to remember here because there are so many of the pendency of cases in supreme court if you see here the supreme court is likely to have yeah consider number of vacancies again if the vacancies increases vacancy is the one of the reason to increase the pendency because more number of vacancies less number of uh, cases will be handled and um, again the pendency of the cases will increase so in 2002 several uh, judges are being retired so that's the reason why number of vacancies is getting improved uh, increases so which again uh, result in increase of pendency cases so as of now uh, they must means as soon as possible the judges must get recruited and the uh, functioning must become uh, active because uh, the problem is uh, there was um, in the past 2 years because of the covid because of the uh, covid 19 for the past 2 years uh, most of the courts were um, most, not most all all the courts it did not function fully functioning was not there if you see the supreme court has only recently began the full physical hearing after 2 years after 2 years of virtual sessions so that is the problem is there so that's the reason why uh, the recruitment and the functioning of the judges must be as soon as possible uh, as soon as possible it must be done okay so next uh, with almost see 30 million pending cases in total india 30 million pending cases are there in india so this is world's largest backlog of litigation okay so and this 30 million is increasing day by day so it is not decreasing day by day it is increasing day by day so bulk of so the problem what is the problem of this so the thing is if the cases are pending like this for years and years 
the inmates in indian prisoners or detainees awaiting the trial that means if whether you don't know the person has conducted the crime or not but he is waiting for the trial in the jail okay if suppose in, means innocent means if suppose he is innocent he does not committed the crime but still he is in jail because of the delayed justice okay for these many years so the case of currently pending is in supreme court in supreme court in india there are 30 million in supreme court if you see there are 70000 pending cases or there 17 70000 pending cases okay so almost 90 90% of them are not ready to be taken because 52000 cases are awaiting the admission 18500 cases are like awaiting regular hearing 422 constitutional bench cases are there so this is the problem so the real problem of indian judiciary is the pendency of the cases so there are several reasons the reasons may be lack of uh, enough staff lack of enough resources lack of expertise or uh, we can say sometimes uh, vacancies okay so what should be done what should be done to reduce the detention government has taken variety of steps that is adoption of national litigation policy of 2010 to help the government become a more effective and accountable litigant and also state adopted its own own state lawsuit policies and in 2006 limbs has been established limbs was created that is legal information management and briefing system why because it will t- keep keep the track of cases in which government is involved because most of the cases are pending so these pending cases in many of the pending cases government is also one of the litigant so that's why limbs has been created to s- uh, make the process fast and to track the cases in which government is involved and see to it that as soon as possible this particular case is solved okay so and at the same time supreme court has authorized the government to allocate convicts 6 months uh, so social service work so so the persons who are awarded with less punishment they can go for the social service work instead of being sent to the overcrowded prisoners overcrowded prisoners okay right what is the need of the hour what to be done in order to solve the issue first vacancies must be filled as soon as possible second alternate dispute resolution okay ne alternate dispute resolution means not going to court alternate alternate to the court you must find something some other resolution some other solution for the problem instead of going court that is nothing but through the mediation or arbitration next coordination between the government and courts okay that means speedy uh, speedy supply of whatever the if court asks about a document government will take sometime months to provide the document so government has to provide the document quickly and go to as to j uh, give the judgment quickly so the process from both government and court side must be speeded up okay and the judicial competence competency among the lower courts should be increased to relieve the load on the higher courts if suppose the lower courts work efficiently okay if lower courts work efficiently and give proper judgment the case will not go to the higher courts that's the reason why the lower courts competency must increase and they must provide justice okay with good expertise okay increase the funds allocated to the judiciary because as i said lack of funds also results in the lower manpower and slower work case management automation okay so and separate benches for each top uh, subject next inter- internal conflict resolution must be up must be involved uh, in order to approach the work okay right shorter and more concentrated judgment should be drafted by the judges themselves right so these are the some of the solutions given but as far as possible many these many solutions must be followed and uh, ex- we ex- expecting the speedy speedy judgments and uh, decreasing in the number of cases and the last topic of the day is about the mystery liver disease the number of cases are increasing day by day about the odd liver condition in the countries of spain denmark netherlands us uk 
so they now authorities are in question what is the main cause of this particular mystery liver because the cases of mystery liver have been reported in spain denmark netherlands us uk as of now no death no death has been reported at no deaths but still uh, the cause of this particular disease is not yet known not yet known authorities are now frantically attempting to determine what is the cause so they they are saying that virus may be the cause of this particular disease because uh, no tangible evidence was discovered yet so they are saying health officials in countries including us and uk are investigating the cases they are detecting the children so mostly uh, it is said that virus is the reason some of these children required actually right so the symptoms virus that have wide range of symptoms that are usually linked to the respiratory and ocular disorders it might be possible that covid-19 infection is also boosting such type of uh, viral attacks so because it may be uh, unidentified unidentified strain of covid-19 so and one more yeah hepatitis c so generally in the hepatitis we will see this side type of problems but the hepatitis but uh, the cases which are being reported now are not the cases of hepatitis they are the tests are the tests are negative towards the hepatitis but because the symptom of substantial liver inflammation is the symptom matches with hepatitis but this particular fever is not hepatitis so they are expecting that either uh, sars cov2 or adenovirus okay either covid uh, sars cov2 virus either sars cov2 virus or some adenovirus might be the reason because some corona mutation virus or might be the reason because the symptoms are like dark pale fecus is there jaundice skin itchiness nausea and vomiting lethargy stomach pains high temperature so these are the symptoms of this particular fever right so among these cases the usual virus that causes the hepatitis uh, of uh, ae were not detected usual viruses which cause hepatitis are not detected so that is the reason why the most of the countries are believing that adenovirus adenovirus might be the reason it is not sure we are uh, thus even the who is not sure about this but it is expecting that it might be the new variation of the covid or it might be the some adenovirus okay so this is all about today's current affairs thank you